what's the biggest challenge working abroad, right? In this podcast, but for you, what's the biggest challenge like setting up in the new country that you don't really know the culture and? Yeah, I think for me the biggest challenge was still the language, you know, mm. because even in the hotel, you know, everything was in English. I didn't speak English at that time when I came here. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's uh, uh, yeah, I had a few words, you know, like, uh, like everybody, but uh, uh, definitely language is a, a challenge, you know. Mm. So in the beginning, I make my list oh, with all the ingredients, French name, English name, French name, English okay. name. <laughs> so when I look for something, at least I know the English name. Mm. So it was a bit complicated at the beginning, but with all this pre-opening, with all this pre-opening time, you know, I had time to to find mm. my way and, and uh, it was okay. And what, how do you find Indonesian cooks and uh, commies and chef at that, at that time? The difference between the... Yeah, I think Europe. Uh, for me, the difference between Europe is... Uh, basically, here the, the Indonesian chefs they didn't they don't have the palate like mm. uh, like because I was cooking in the French yeah. uh, for a French restaurant as a French chef and making French food. Mm. So the 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 palate uh, of course is not the same. So we have to uh, to adapt. Basically, uh, I make from the very beginning very detailed recipe yeah. where we basically scaled everything from salt, pepper, everything was uh, uh, scaled. So to make sure we ha- we can achieve this uh, standard mm. and 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 this consistency that, yeah. that you need to run a good restaurant and this we applied from the very beginning okay. so then uh, it was easier for them because they, they had to follow you know a, a proper yeah. recipe and and it was easier for them to to find the the right uh, uh, taste point yeah it's it's quite it's interesting uh, can you tell us about how you i mean you nurture your team's palate because un- until now of uh, Like Indonesians rarely eat French food, you yes. know, like amus, amus <laughs> type, type of food. food yes. Yeah, you know. So I think um, basically, uh, of course, I encourage all all my staff to taste, taste mm. a lot. I mean, that's only the only way you can uh, uh, remember, taste, uh, mm. acquire a palate. Uh, you don't have to eat a whole dish, but yeah. you, at least you have to taste and 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 taste a lot. And uh, because we have uh, proper recipes, with everything is is uh, uh, properly scaled. So we pinpoint to you know only 90% percent already, and then just have to do a really mm. really small uh, fine touch. Uh, and then yeah, I try to also uh, keep my my staff as much as possible. So I have yeah. people uh, with me today that were there already uh, almost when uh, you start 98. Wow. So uh, that's also you know a way of uh, uh, mm. uh, uh, making sure of consistency and, yeah. and people you know help you to train. Uh, you know, new mm. stuff or, or uh, I think that's really important as well. Yeah, amazing, amazing. So, and how's uh, Amus Gourmet open? Uh, Amus Gourmet, so this basically, uh, 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 so I work at the hotel for for a few years. Then I actually left Indonesia for a while and went to Australia mm. and then came back in 2004, uh, back to the same hotel. Oh. And basically from that uh, point, On basically, I knew that I would probably stay in Indonesia, mm. so I was back to my uh, first uh, uh, goal: is yeah. opening a, a restaurant. So in Indonesia, the biggest challenge uh, as a as an expat, and, and especially at that time, mm. difficult to be a, a owner on yourself. Yeah, so of you course. have to have a, a local partner. Yes, and uh, finding a local partner is also not that yeah. easy because there's many. Uh, corruption and, and other yes. things, uh, so sometimes a bit difficult. Yeah, to, finding the right vision yeah, for that and finding the, partner, the right yeah. person yeah. who has the same vision like you. Yeah. So it took me uh, a little bit of time, you know, mm. until from 2004. You know, at that time I I did a lot of consulting, you know, so mm. working with uh, not only the hotel but also with other people's. Yeah. So you know, uh, uh, it helped me to learn about how people think and how mm. people organize, uh, uh, especially. On the accounting side and yeah. how people work in Indonesia, and uh, uh, so yeah, it took me a few years, you know, until I find the uh, the right person to mm-hmm. uh, to launch uh, this uh, Amuse project. Yeah, you must be very excited when you open this. So dream come true, right? Yes. So yeah, it was finally the the dream uh, come true. So from '98 until 2009, so you yeah. know, it was sort of a ten year uh, journey. And uh, but uh, I was confident I had the the, the right partner and mm. uh, that we could really uh, start at uh, you know and and do what we wanted to do. Yeah. So uh, f- for our viewers that never been to Amuse, yes, can you explain about the concept of Amuse and? 
Yeah, so yeah. Amuse is basically uh, uh, really a, a fine dining uh, French restaurant like you would find them in, in France. Okay. And that's the, basically the, the, the goal of, the, of this uh, uh, restaurant is, is uh, uh, people who, who traveled already to France who have the, ch- uh, the chance to, to, to try a, a, a fine dining restaurant or mm. gourmet restaurant in France. They could find the same atmosphere and the same quality of food here in Jakarta, mm. and also the one who never have the chance to go to France or, or you know, can afford to go to France, they could try a truly French meal here in, in Jakarta. Yes. So we are a bit the uh, exotic mm. uh, yeah. part for an Indonesian. Of course, yes. As, uh, you know, for me, maybe the exotic part is Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, we want to bring this uh, uh, this uh, exotic uh, mm. uh, part of France to, to Indonesia. Yeah, there's not a lot of like French fine dining restaurant yeah, for French fine dining and and truly French restaurants. Uh, yeah, truly you know, French restaurants. In general, course, yeah. there's there's not there's not many. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, in, because, in your point of view. Yeah, because uh, uh, produce wise, we come from mm. two different regions of the world. So to make a good uh, French cuisine, uh, it's not uh, cheap, or it's difficult yeah. to make it cheap because mm. a lot of produce would be import. And yeah. in France, we cook with a lot of wine. You know, everything has wine in it almost. Yeah. <laughs> so, and here, wine is really <laughs> yeah. uh, affordable. Exactly. Wine is really a challenge. Mm. So, yeah, you know, you, you can understand uh, that uh, difficult to make uh, uh, affordable French food in, mm. in Indonesia. But I think that's why you don't uh, find too many uh, uh, yeah. uh, true French uh, restaurants or French fine dinings. Also, produce-wise. Uh, we work with different uh, 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 products than than here in, in a hot country. Uh, uh, France is, uh, you know, um, yeah. a climate. Even if you have Mediterranean, but we have also the, mm. the northern of France uh, where we have different, very different produce than here. Uh, yeah, and it goes both both way. I imagine it goes both ways. If yeah. you want to open a luxurious Indonesian restaurant in, you would also have to. Oh similar, my god, it will be challenges. really expensive. <laughs> yes. It will be really expensive for. A tempeh or a yes. sambal. If you have to airflow and everything, it's yeah. going to be a, a challenge. Yes. And what style do you cook? Do you do you cook like specifically Mediterranean or? Um, we don't cook specifically Mediterranean. Or? Of course, we st- we try to privilege Mediterranean food because we are in a hot country. Mm. Uh, Mediterranean being a bit lighter and yeah. and uh, and uh, uh, is is uh, easier in in, uh, in, in uh, Indonesia for people to to eat and to understand. Uh, but we do also uh, uh, specialties from or influence from other uh, regions mm. of, of France. Okay, so chef, uh, I want to ask a question. Like, why uh, you mentioned like okay at that time I already knew I will stay in Indonesia. Yes. Why? Uh, there's a you know a second part to me. You know yeah. my wife and uh, my family. Okay. And uh, uh, <laughs> I know my wife uh, would have. Really found it difficult to go to France on a full time, you know, <laughs> spending some cold winters uh, and rainy days over there. Uh, so you know, and uh, also I think uh, business wise, there's maybe more imp- opportunities here in, mm. in Indonesia than uh, at that time in France. Uh, so yeah, that was my my decision at that time. Okay. okay. So chef, like uh, we're talking here before COVID. Yes. Before COVID, like uh, how. How's the rate of uh, dining people here? Like, is it always crowded? Because, you know, we talk like, oh yeah, maybe fine dining restaurant only uh, full on weekends and everything because it's so expensive and everybody don't want to eat that slowly. Yes. We want to, you know, there, there's that rumor, right? Yeah, uh, but actually, uh, for us fine dining, we actually um, almost more bi- most busier weekdays mm. than uh, uh, weekends. Wow! So actually, we have maybe more revenue on weekdays than on weekends wow, because we work great. a lot with uh, business clientele. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, a lot of our our clients they do business entertainment. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they they come to Amuse to entertain, you know, important mm. people or business relations and things like that. So yeah, they, we are busy uh, all week. Actually, we're more busy dinner time than lunch time. Actually. Yeah, nice. But it's uh, uh, quite a steady uh, business. Nice, nice. And uh, COVID happened, of course. Yes. And <laughs> now, yeah, <laughs> uh, everybody is finding it tough, of course. But uh, how do you counter the 
PSBB and yeah, we started uh, actually, uh, and I think we were one of the first one to start is, is by selling because of course you know you're running a fine dining restaurant and mm. especially we're working with import products, so we always have stocks. Yeah, uh, because sometimes difficult to get and uh, and uh, so we were we have some stocks. So if from one day to another they tell you to close the restaurant. Yeah. What do you do with your stock? Yes, so exactly. So uh, uh, I have, uh, you know, on my phone, I have a very large uh, list of uh, followers. Mm. So I had my uh, uh, WhatsApp groups already set when I promote things and things like that. So yeah. I, I promote right away, you know, I'm selling steaks, you know, I'm mm. selling Wagyu, I'm selling uh, <laughs> fish. Uh, you know, you can uh, buy it and cook it at home, you know, and mm. uh, just uh, come and pick it up. And uh, that worked very well from the very beginning. Okay. And uh, actually, I, I had a, a team here preparing, you know, cutting steak, filleting fish, and and then, and then I take everything to my home. You know, I I, I live in uh, uh, Kemang, mm. and uh, many expats living over there. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I had a big chill freezer at home, so I store everything on there, and people just come and pick up at my home. Oh wow! <laughs> so I come like two, three, three times a week to Amuse Philip. And then bring everything at home, and people keep coming and at my nice, place to, nice. to pick up. Nice, nice. So guys, bukan <laughs> bukan lu doang yang buka PO. <coughs> and Chef Jill saya buka PO. Yes. So that was very busy in the beginning, and also because we carried a very uh, 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 large stock of wines, mm. so we also sold our wines from the very beginning. Special offers, you know, of course, much cheaper than we sell it in the restaurants. Mm. And since people were not traveling anymore, you know, they couldn't buy wine wine overseas or from duty free or things. Places like that, so we sold uh, uh, a lot of wine as well. Mm. And uh, I saw the burgers, which yes. looks really delicious. Yeah, so that yeah. was the the second stage, you know. Play a game. It's called You Better Know It. We ask uh, short questions, sure. and you answer. Uh, you cannot if you don't want to answer. It's fine, but mm. yeah, we appreciate if you will answer. <laughs> okay, so. You better know it, guys. 